Sebring International Raceway, one of North America's prestigious road racing circuits. This one on an airfield from World War II. It's a battleground today, though, for the PSI Motorsports USA Race of Champions. 20 drivers fighting for 10 spots in a three-race showdown to beat everyone else. Here we go. It's time to head down to qualifying, and the race is about to begin and to be uh, a couple minutes from now. 25 minutes is our race distance for all three of these races this afternoon. Kyle Heyer joining you live from Sim Racing Chicago here in Algonquin, Illinois. If you've never been, you should give it a try. Run out to space and try out their, uh, their 10 simulators of the highest quality in the area. It's absolutely a fantastic place. You should give it a look if you have it. We're going to head down to the racetrack here in a moment as 10 drivers are basically racing for five spots in the main race here in just a couple of minutes time. Well, there are just two minutes left on the clock here for drivers to lay down their times. We'll head down to the racetrack and just cover the tail end of qualifying here at the top of the board in qualifying. Starting on the front row is going to be Jem Ahmed in the number nine. Had a pretty good race earlier today in the uh, the points paying championship race for the PSI Motorsports USA Racing League and is going to get to go again this time from the very front row in the number nine car. Checkered flag for him. Second place is Matt Cater and uh, third is James Pesic, but he'll be joining us a little bit later as well uh, once the second race kicks off. The top five from each of these next two races will advance to a third and final race here this afternoon on a Sunday at Sim Racing Chicago. We're virtually in Central Florida. We'll head down to the racetrack and get gridded up, but here's a look at your weather information. It's cloudy skies here in virtual Central Florida. Uh, 28 degrees air temp, 47 degree track temp, and just a smidge over 40, or excuse me, 50% humidity. So it is a little bit sticky out there and it could get a little bit more uh, throughout the rest of the day. Cars are gridding. They're gonna have a full pace lap to warm up their tires and their brakes. And race distance should be about 12 laps. That should be what we're looking at here uh, for each of these two qualifying races. There are 10 drivers on the grid for this. The goal is to be in the top five or better because that will advance you to the last race on the day. And James Pesek will be joining us uh, in the second race. And uh, he's showing up there on the ticker as the number 40, but uh, he will drop off of it once the race starts. And it is a field packed full of Porsches. There's a couple cars that are uh, not Porsche machinery, a couple BMWs. One of them is car number eight. Uh, that is uh, Nico Zen, uh, Zanzucchini. Zanzuc Zanzucci. Zanzucci. A little roll of that. <laughs> I'm looking around to see if anybody knows if I did that right, but I don't think so. So uh, I'm going to just roll with Nico because I can say that one. Uh, Nico is going to roll off on the outside of row number two as engines are fired. Here's a look at our racetrack for today's activities. 3.7 miles, 17 corners around Sebring. Turn one is a fast fourth gear left-hander. It'll take you all the way down to turn three. That's a decent passing opportunity, but you better get it done quick because once you get to three, three through five is only really a lane and a half wide, not a lot of space to maneuver. Then out of turn five, you're going to head through the sweeping bend at turn six. They call that gurney bend into turn seven, the safety pin before heading up to Cunningham at the top of the screen. Turn 10, tower turn, turn 13. That's the top right corner there. Thru running all the way to Bishop Bend, the quick left, left kink into Jean Dibien and then turn 16 at Le Mans. That will lead everybody around to the famous Sunset Bend at turn 17. The concrete here at Sebring is feet thick and it has never been resurfaced. At least the concrete portions have never been resurfaced. All original runways and taxiways from the airfield that was here when the B-25s were practicing and getting set the train for warfare in World War II. But no longer is it the rumble and roar of airplane engines. It is flat sixes and inline sixes that are we going racing today. Field is now working their way around towards turn seven. Pointed this one out as the 
called the hairpin, but you can see it's the uh, extension of the original course, right a little bit past where those cones are in the foreground. And there is the original hairpin there. That track layout has been adjusted to now having this uh, corner they call the safety pin. Doubling up for the start and getting tires and brakes ready to go racing. Here's a quick look at your starting lineup on the front row. It's Ahmed in the number nine, Cater in the number seven, and then in row two, it, uh, that would have been the 40 of James Pesek, but he'll start at the, uh, at the next race. It's Nico in the, the number eight in fourth place, followed by Taras and Luba in row three. Row four, Stanislav Treva in the number five, and Volodymyr Kopko in the number three. And then at the tail end of the field, it is Max Zykin in the number 10, and Alexander Vladkin in 10th in the number six. That's your starting lineup here for our 25-minute race. This is the calm before the storm as we uh, take a look at the weather. No rain expected, but it will stay cloudy and a breeze of 11 kilometers an hour out of the east coming off of the Atlantic Ocean. So the field working their way through Jean Debienne and getting set for action here at Sebring. And on that front row, it is Ahmed in that number nine, that uh, Pirelli liveried car, black and yellow on the left. Driver's left, that is. On the right, it's Matt Cater in the number seven. Brumos Porsche colors on the nose of that car. Once the pace car pulls in and the green flag flies, distance is 25 laps. Uh, sorry, 25 minutes, 12 laps. Big thanks to those that have made this happen this afternoon. Tim Racing Chicago for providing the place to do battle here today. Auto Transport Chicago, full body shop services, fast and reliable door-to-door -door car delivery. And you can get your free CDL with Auto Transport Chicago, autotransportchicago.com, and PSI Motorsports, as well as SVB Express and Motul. Green flag, we're four wide on the start already on the launch. As we head down to turn one, it is a frantic start. The nine car got absolutely swarmed. Contact, and they're all going to go around. The eight, the three, into the wall. And big dramas right at the drop of the green. More cars tumbling and crashing in the background. But for the top spot, out front, it is the number two car of Luba. From sixth to first, followed by Taras. Both of these cars started in row three, and now they lead onto the back straightaway. Matt Cater pulling up alongside. And just behind him, Alexander Vladkin. He started last. He is now fourth place. Contact here into turn seven. Gives a shot to the rear of the number seven car. And accelerating up out onto the back straightaway. For the lead, lead change, and trouble behind him. The seven car gets looped around. Oh, that was almost disaster. Cater goes for a slide and a spin. Here's what happened down into Cunningham corner. It's in there really hot and then just gets hooked by the two on corner exit. They go for a slide. Everybody's scrambling, and here comes the nine of Ahmed on a re on a charge back to the front after getting shuffled out in the opening corner. And a big send from the four of Sherbot through the S's and into the wall hard. Had this one straight lined and over the curbs and had to gather it back up and then into the wall. Out front, it is the number one of Taras 
leading the way by 3.9 seconds over Alexander Vladkin and Luba in this number two. Out for blood here. Down into turn three. Takes a swipe. Accelerating up onto the back straightaway now. Two Porsches battling for second place. The six is wide. Vladkin's off course. That's going to be a shortcut penalty, and that will allow the two to get by. Oh, trouble. The six gets looped. The two's in it. Two cars crashing for second place. And Vladkin's going to pull ahead. And that will allow Zykin to pull into third place. And here is the trouble between these two. They got side by side. The six pulls left. Was not clear. They tangle. And the two car is the one that gets the short end of the stick that time. And the battle now resumes for fourth. Ahmed facing Kopkov. This is for fourth place. The nine was the driver that started up on the front row, and he's now going to jump the curbs, and they're going to touch. Spin, slide, and off course they go. Two drivers just running out of space. Bang. That's two freebies for the number two. And how about this little scrum off into turn 17? That is that cater on a recharge fight from getting dumped out of second place. Now back to sixth. As Volodymyr Kopkov runs a little wide at 17, and here comes Ahmed again. These two tangled at Lamar Corner, and now we're going right back to fight into turn one here at Sebring. Nine got the wall just a little bit there through turn one. Nice crossover maneuver there by the three of Kopkov. Contact into turn three. And they'll keep it on course. And Kopkov is off and spinning. All the while out front. No challenges for Taras Veruchko. Battle for second, or third place is heating up. Max Zykin in the number 10. Got uh, the two right behind him of Luba closing in. Zykin keeps a four-tenth advantage over Luba, leaving turn 16. And remember, the top five from this race will advance to the finale on the day. Up the inside comes Luba. That was a late lunge into 17. Oh, here's a huge send into turn one. Can Luba keep it pinned to the inside? Yes. And third place belongs to the number two car again. And Max Zykin had to give that one up with a big send at turn one. Door was open, and Luba took advantage of it. Zykin back to fourth. Zykin and Nico dropping tires at the exit of turn five. Oh, 
Oh, trouble for the 10, and around goes Max Zykin, leaving the hairpin. I think this one was all on his own, too. It runs out into the dirt, tries to accelerate, and big dodge there by the eight car. Zykin from third all the way down to seventh in just one lap. Battle for second, could be heating up here. Vladkin and uh, Luba, 1.6, 1.5, 1.4, and then throw in the eight as well as the two runs wide. And that's actually gonna give a position swap, move the eight of Nico up one spot into third place. That's a podium spot. Bouncing over the bumps at Sunset Bend. Yeah, battle for second is going to heat up pretty quickly because Nico is on a mission to run down the six car. BMW versus Porsche. The pink Porsche versus the Bavarian Beamer, and into turn five, they continue to run about five car lengths apart. And is there a mistake to capitalize on? Riding on the tailpipes of Alexander Vladkin's pink Porsche. Here comes the eight. I thought he'd go send it down the inside, but he didn't take didn't take the spot, but Vladkin took the bait, left him a lane he didn't need to give. And he didn't get into gear, and here comes the eight down the inside at tower turn, and he is through to second place. Nico. And the six is off course. And just behind all this, Matt Cater in the number seven. The Porsche's off course ahead. Opportunity. Man, there's so much tank slapping, sliding, leaving all the corners. Traction control doing a lot of work today on these rear engine Porsches. They have a lot of grip leaving corners, but you can't take it for granted. And the two, big lunge into 17. Luba trying to take advantage. And oh, look out, the eight spun on all on his own at turn 17. And now they're three wide for third place. Three into one does not go. Who gives in? Neither. And the eight's off at turn one. Yeah, this was never going to work out. Three drivers wide. You see the seven bails out, but the two and the eight have a coming together, and both end up way off course. One in the tires, one in the gravel. And it's gone from bad to worse. Meanwhile, for second, it's the six and the seven car. Cater uh, in the seven chasing Vladkin in this pink Porsche. And just about at the halfway point here for this first of two qualifying races. Top five. Oh, cr another crash between the six, the seven, now the nine. They're all in it together, leaving Cunningham. And they continue to be a revolving door of carnage at the front. Watch here on corner exit. Running out wide, rejoining and tagging the Brumos car. 
and sends them both back outside the top five. And a slowdown being served here by the sixth car of Vladkin. And the eighth's right back in the fight. But enough attrition to cycle the lead a couple of times. And Nico is back. Currently qualifies into the main race if he stays where he is, but he's going to want more than that. Right behind the six, right behind the two. Wasn't as brave through turn one as Alexander Vladkin. And the six is way off at the exit of turn five and watch out for the rejoin. He's gonna spin and into the Armco. And that will shift this fight up to fourth. Six cars still trying to get rolling. And Alexander Vladkin into the tire bundles. That might be all she wrote for a car that was running up inside the top five. Difference between being in and being out when qualifying for this main race. All the while up front, there has been no drama from Tras leading the way every lap so far and just five laps to go this time by. Closest battle, now this one, the two and the eight. And whoops, there goes the eight car this time. Nico goes around for a loop at the exit of Lamar Corner. Here's what happened. And just had the rear end swap ends on him, threw the car in a little bit too hard, destabilized the rear end, and it was never able to stick. Nico still stays fifth, but he's only four seconds clear of Stanislav Dreva, who is a winner of one of her earlier races today. And Dreva is one spot shy of qualifying into that main race. Vladkin is out as we continue to watch Dreva work his way through turn one and in pursuit of a qualifying position of fifth place that Nico has for the moment. And what car was that off? I think that was the fork. No. Trying to figure out what car that was at the back of the shot, slipping and sliding. Matt Cater in the number seven is closing in on Luba in the two. These two white Porsches will be battling for a spot on the podium. A little lateral slide there for the two leaving Cunningham. That rear end of that two car is a little bit sideways, left the corner. Flat-footed and letting the traction control sort the rest out, but costing him some time on corner exit. That time grabs some grass on driver's left. That'll throw off the braking a bit, but still manages to tip it in quite nicely. Matt Cater is reeling him in. Little assistance from the slipstream down the long back straightaway here at Sebring. And then into Sunset Bend. B 
speeds north of 160 miles an hour and then whoa it all the way down to just 85. And the eight has gone around for a spin again. Same spot as before. Turn 16 gets up on the rumble strips. Tries to power down and rear end just chatters away and he'll lose more time. And your battle for third is on. Here comes Matt Cater on Luba. Luba's in really hot into turn three. But not brave enough to close the gap to the two. Big slide. There's so much more commitment out of the number two car, but over committing perhaps and costing some time. This is the closest battle on the track at the moment, all happening 17 seconds behind the leader of Taras. And then Ahmed up to second place after falling to the rear. And it is just half a car length between these two for third place. Here comes Cater up driver's right. That is a risky move in a high velocity area of the track. He'll have to think about a better spot. There's contact and the two goes for a wild slide. Can he woe it up before the barriers? Yes. But he went for a ride. And there was some assistance there as well. From the seven of Cater and Gathers it up using the extra off-track area, but drops to fourth. That shifts Matt up to third place, and there are just five minutes remaining on the clock, but interestingly, only two laps, two and a half laps worth, as Taras has worked his way into lap traffic. He has just set sail. Last time by his best lap of the race at 208.083. Well, look out and crash. Taras, the race leader, gets knocked off course and into the tire bundles. The one thing that'll save him here is that he's got a 17-second advantage to lean on, and he'll lean on about half of that. Now, that was the four car of uh, Yuri Shirba. It was a lap down, and now the second place, number nine going to try to go by and he will indeed on driver's right move Ahmed up past the lap car that tore the lead that Taras had in half it was 17 seconds now it's 7.8 there's a shoot go two laps left Taras in the number one. There are just two laps remaining in this race. And Taras is leading by 7.8 seconds, but that is coming down. The laps that Ahmed is running are significantly faster. Two seconds faster even then the leader's best. So if Ahmed keeps this up, he will catch that lead car. Seven seconds. 6.5, 6.4. There's still a lap and a half left on the board. It's getting dark here at Sebring. 
Seems like the weather is going off, but it hasn't really changed a lot since the drop of the green. But the clouds have absolutely come over this racetrack. That was a decent sector for Tadas, or at least a, a, not a good one for Ahmed. He ripped out a 206-521 the last time around. That's a second and a half faster than the leader. But he's going to need to do that again and get some assistance from a mistake. There is a mistake. There is a mistake. The leader has spun out, and he's off. 2.7, 2.6. And he's going to have a slowdown to serve, I think, at the very least. How could he not? Let's have a look at this. Spins out. Oh, he won't have a slowdown. That was very, very lucky. Where he spun was not a corner cut. But the gap is from six to three seconds. And coming to the white flag. Last lap around Sebring. There's the flag waving. One more lap to go. The gap is 2.9 seconds. If the same lap happens again for both of them, Ahmed will win this race. Head down and don't mess this up. Ahmed charging through the opening corners of the circuit. Two and a half seconds. This is just to qualify in to the main race later. But a win is a win is a win. And he's 2.6 seconds shy of stealing it from Taras. Two point five seconds. Any mistake from the leader is going to exchange hands of this lead. There's been trouble for the five. Reva has got to get rolling because he's got a car charging from behind. It's Zykin, and that's the battle for the last transfer position. These two cars, whichever one of these comes ahead of the other, is going to qualify into the main race. So while they fight amongst themselves, the leaders have just a couple corners left to navigate. And for the number one, it was a pass on the opening lap to put him into fourth place all the way up to first. And from there, he never relinquished it. Almost did a couple of laps ago. But Taras Beshruko is going to win here in the qualifying race at Sebring in the race of champions. Second is Ahmed. Third is going to be Matt Cater. And the last transfer spot is going to be fiercely contested between these two, Zykin and Dreva, who's in this green Porsche. Uh, Zykin has had problems, and that will relinquish his only opportunity to take the final transfer spot. So through goes the three of Kopkov. He will also be eliminated. And the last handful of drivers come across the stripe. Here is your last qualifying driver, Stanislav Dreva. Started this race in sixth, only had to gain one spot to qualify in. And he is going to do just that. Stanislav Dreva is the last of the five qualifiers to make it to the last show of the day. Well, with the first of three races complete, we're going to step away for a few minutes' time and get set for the second race. But a quick look at your race results here. And it was at the top. Tras Pashuko, Ahmed, Kader, 
Luba and Stanislav Dreva that are going to qualify in to the third and final race of the day. It's Vladimir Kopkov, Max Zykin, Yuri Sherba, Alexander Vladkin, and Nico that will round out your top 10 results here at Sebring. We'll step away for a few minutes and we'll be right back with the second of our qualifying races here momentarily. Today is a track day with PSI Motorsports at Ozarks International Raceway. I'm very excited and very happy that we have a big crowd of cars. This facility is amazing. I love it. I'm encouraged to come everyone and see it and try it. And uh, we're going to have another very cool event in October. It's going to be open uh, track day. We're going to have a few cars for rent. Supra and a Volkswagen GTI. Also uh, ride-alongs in race cars. So our program is uh, designed for you to come and experience Ozark International Raceway. You can choose either BMW E92 or you can choose a Porsche Cayman Club Sport. So those two cars we offer a ride along set. We're gonna have a good time, so check it out.
And back live from Sim Racing Chicago, our second of three races this afternoon. Our race of champions is about to begin in just a couple moments. Welcome back. I'm Kyle Heyer bringing you all the action from the PSI Motorsports USA event here today at Sim Racing Chicago at Premier Sim Racing Facility, just about an hour northwest of Chicago in Algonquin. We have a stacked field of competitors here in person and from uh, across the world here. We've got James Pesek from uh, joining us from uh, around Ozarks International. You can see the livery there as he gets set on the front row here in the number 40. Good to have James Pesek with us here uh, in, in the first of the Mercedes AMG GT3s that we've seen today. We haven't seen anything other than uh, Porsche and BMW equipment. So this is the first time that we've seen uh, one of these out at the front. So let's have a quick look here at our track map for the day. Again, 3.7 miles and 17 turns around. It all starts with a fast fourth gear left hander at turn one. And while this track is relatively flat uh, as far as elevation is concerned, if you added up all the tiny little bumps, it might as well be the biggest uh, elevation change of any racetrack because it happened so many times so quickly. The concrete here has been in place since 19, uh, the 1940s when it was used as a World War II training airfield. It's several feet thick. Will they repave it? No. It's going to be like that probably for as long as it's safe to drive on. Cars are rolling now for their pace lap around. Let's have a look at our left-hand side of the screen. There is our starting lineup. And it's James Pesek on the front row in the number 40 with that gorgeous Ozarks livery. Bright pink, as is commonplace with his cars, even here in iRacing. Then alongside him, it's going to be the number one of Shahan, followed by Daniel Simpson in the number four. Then it's Jose in the number eight, right behind him in fourth, followed by Max in the number five. and down the rest of the field. And across the, uh, the rest of the field, starting in sixth place is gonna be Ilya in the number six machine. That is that another Mercedes AMG GT3 that's joined the party. Followed by seventh place, Roberto. That is uh, the number nine machine. Then starting in eighth right behind is the number seven of Alan Powell. Alan is in that uh, number seven Porsche. Then in sim number 11, starting in 10th, that's Andre Turchin. Uh, followed by a couple more competitors at the bottom of the order here, starting in the 12 car. It's going to be, uh, looks like the 12. I think that is supposed to be... We're we'll going to look at that car here in a moment's time. Number two, though, it's going to be Patrick Bernadowicz. And that is your field of 11 competitors in this race. And sim number 10 has nobody in it for this race. That will drop off the timing and scoring once the race begins. We'll have a look at the weather information as well, see how things are stacking up this afternoon. 28 degrees Celsius air temp, 46 degree track temp and 44% humidity and a slightly breezier 13 kilometers an hour out of the northeast. Well, that's James in the bright pink Mercedes AMG and boy, is that a stylish looking car that he's got. 6.2 liter fire breathing engine under the hood of that car from the older SLS AMG and it retains that configuration versus its twin turbocharged counterpart that you would find in the GT4 class Mercedes. But whoop, there's a car spinning in the background and that is the number nine of Roberto. He's gone around for a bit of a slide. See if James Pesek can just light the afterburners of that Mercedes and step away. The advantage that that car has is its compliance. It's got a really nice balance to it. It's a very predictable car. And at a racetrack that is unpredictable, having the beast that you're behind the wheel of 
be the most predictable thing is about the best you're going to be able to do. Through Sunset Bend. Past the fuel station and up onto the front straightaway. 25 minutes is what we've got up on the board. James Pesek in the number 40 is going to lead us to the green in the Ozarks Raceway Mercedes AMG. Green flag flies, and it's a frantic start. Three abreast already. Big moves down the inside. They're four wide now, five wide on the run to turn one. Pesek's going to have to bail out as through comes Andre right up to the front. And now Daniel to the lead. How about Simpson in the number four red Porsche to the top spot? What a drive. And behind him, a huge crash. Everybody's in it. Everybody's in it. Pesek is through. Somehow, he was able to escape that. It's calamity like a meteor just landed at Sebring, and everybody's a victim. What a mess down there at turn three. How about that? Let's go back and see how Pesek avoided this. Watch from high above here as the field collects behind him. I don't know how it just... Every single car except for him caught up in that wreck, and he dodged it. And he should go buy a lottery ticket. I'll tell you one driver keep an eye on, though, is Daniel Simpson in that number four, taken out of the lead. I don't even know where he started back in third, but he was able to climb up to the front. And then he got taken out, and they're crashing again ahead of him. Cars scattering everywhere. And just like that, the four is back up to second place. So we're two minutes in. I haven't even completed a first lap yet. And James Pesek has just gotten the heck out of Dodge before he can end up sideways or turned around. And the five has also had issues. That is Max behind the wheel. Number six of Ilya and the Mercedes AMG. And this car's in too hot. Slowing it down is the eight of Jose. And now we settle in and click off laps. James Pesic. Again, that how he managed to dodge that wreck, I will never know. But here's another look at it again. This was the start of the race. They were four wide at one point. And somehow, Pesic is going to avoid all this. Wow. Seven point four second advantage over the number four Porsche of Simpson. And Jose in third, and then it's five seconds back to find the next car. That's the twelve. Eric behind the wheel of that. Ooh, watch the tire drop in the in the dirt at the exit of turn 13 at Tower. All the while, just four minutes on the board and enough drama for a lifetime. James Pesek. Ozarks has a whole lot of elevation change, something that Sebring doesn't have, but both of them have incredible character. And that's something that a professional like James will be able to sort out. And up the front straightaway towards turn one. He is just on a mission. Good lap times, too. 203, 688. Some of the fastest times we've seen today. And Simpson is not quite able to match him, although he's close.
And behind him, there was a little bit of drama at Sunset Bend between the seven of Allen. See what happened here. I think he's just going to get in a little bit hot. You catch a bump the wrong way right here mid corner. Yep. Understeers and then bounces off the fence. Two drivers showing as out. The one of Shahan and the two of Patrick Bernadowicz. tell you if Simpson can continue to make laps the way that he did in the previous race today that he won he is going to be a threat to James Pesek but Pesek is keeping him honest right now seven seconds clear and growing Up onto the back straightaway now. About six minutes complete, 19 to go. And into Sunset Bend for Pesek. Closest battle on the racetrack right now is about for fifth spot. That's the nine of Roberto and the 11 of Andre. This is through Bishop Bend here. And it sounds like maybe some issues for Ilya in the six. Starts kind of walking around and a little bit sideways and grabs the arm code to finish it off. Try to straight line there to make up some time, but that will not work out in the end. It's gonna cost you more time than you'll gain. And Pesek's lead has not really grown. Last time by, he was actually two tenths slower than Daniel behind him. Daniel ran a 203-280 to Pesek's 203-412. So Simpson a little bit quicker. If he could just keep doing that, his disadvantage is he's not, you know, Pesek's got a little bit of an advantage because he's at home with all of his gear that is he's very, very used to. Or Simpson's just jumping in and, and trying to make it work. And that time he lost a little ground through the middle sector. Back to these two. Battle for fifth place. This battle is pretty fierce between the BMW and the Porsche. Front engine BMW, rear engine 911. A little bit hot there into turn 13 for Andre and the number 11. A big lunge up the inside of Jean de Bienne. That's not going to work. And out and over the rumble strips goes Andre, and that's going to Cost him some time to boot. Simpson actually still managed to pick up at the tail end of last lap and run a faster time than the leader. But he's struggling with consistency. He's able to run quicker than James, but not quicker for longer. And it sounds, looks like the five had also gone around for another loop. This is back at turn 17 at Sunset Bend. Was there contact that led to this? That was the six in behind him, and I have a feeling there was... No, there wasn't. He just got spooked into it, went for a slide, and actually saved it. That was very nice. 
Nicely done there by the number five of Max, who's able to keep that car mostly under control. And James Pesek leading by seven seconds still. Daniel Simpson is trying to track him down. We'll keep an eye on the lap time this time through. He's gaining a lot into Sunset Bend in particular. He's a lot braver through that section of the track than Pesek seems to be. But on the lap time, he was four one thousandths slower. So he is just matching this one after the other, the lap times of James Pesek. But you're going to need to be faster, not just matching. And the 11 is tracked down the nine again. Roberto and Andre going back at it. Battle for P5. This is the transfer spot to that final race. If it finishes as is, the 9 of Roberto moves on. The 11 does not. And that's how critical this pass is. But the 11's wide at Sunset Bend and going to cost them some more time. Other battles have mostly fizzled. It's still Pesic and the number four of Daniel Simpson. And two drivers again out as they have been for the last couple of laps, the one and the two. Keeping our eyes peeled on these front two and the lap times that they continue to run. They have been within two or three tenths every lap since the drop of the green. And again, James Pesek avoiding that big calamity on the initial start. Has led now five laps. This will be his sixth lap led. And we cross halfway. 12 minutes, 30 seconds to go. 203-801. And 204, 311, so a half a second loss this time for Simpson. Bit of a scrap happening back here for seventh place between Allen and Max. Two Porsches going at it. Green one is Max, the white one is Allen. Big lunge from the green Porsche and overtakes, but at what cost? Here comes the seven back to driver's right. It's like robbing a bank and then turning around and giving the money right back to the teller through there at Jean Debienne. Took the spot and whoops, handed it right back. And down the inside into 17, another big lunge. Side by side through Sunset. That's going to push the seven out way wide and into the wall. And that will allow Max to take that spot from Allen and begin to pull away for that seventh spot, but still two positions shy of transferring to the final race. A little bit wide there for the five and spins at the exit of five in the spot he just took. He'll give it right back again. And like magnets, these two seem to just glue each other together for a battle for seventh place and give it back to Allen for the time being. And looks like the six of Ilya is also going to go by in that silver Mercedes AMG. And wide at the exit of seven. 
And Max will take that right back. He has been the nucleus for all of the activity this afternoon, this five car has. Oh, spin for the six right behind. Wagging its tail out front, though. James Pasek has not looked back since that opening lap crash that he dodged every bullet. He has managed to extend his lead on Daniel uh, Simpson by about second and a half since the last time we checked in. So he leads now by 8.5 and continues to run laps that are about a half a second to a second quicker. Almost have to wonder if Simpson burned up his tires here. The weather is not particularly toasty, but if you slide the rear around a bunch, you're going to burn those rear tires up, especially when they're doing all the work on the Porsche. As thing just squatting to get leaving uh, tower turn, the thing just squats and goes. But if you leave too much throttle pedal in it, you're going to be scraping all the rubber off right when you need it. And it seems like he's just burned up his good stuff too early. Eight minutes left, and the majority of the battles have mostly settled. This is the closest one between Roberto and Andre again. This ignited a little while ago, but they're going to battle at least one more time before this race is over, given that the 11 is about two seconds a lap faster than the 9 of Andre. Oh, big slide there through Bishop Bend. That is a little bit more than you would want to do, and they're both off at Jean Dubien. And they're going to avoid contact, but that uh, they both <laughs> ran themselves off the road. Here's a look at, at that moment. They just both get in here really hot. End up off, off track. But I want to go back even further than that to... Watch the 11 and the slide that he has here at Bishop. I don't even know if you can see it from outside the car, but that thing was in neutral steer all the way through. Right here. Oh, just had a big wiggle at a very volatile part of the racetrack. And speaking of volatile, how about the battle for seventh? The seven and the five. This is Allen and Max, and once again, they trade spots. But until one of them is in the top five, it is just a battle for the best of the rest. Everyone from Roberto forward is in. Everyone from Andre back is out of the next race. And the seven is going to go for a slide and into the tire, into the Armco at the exit of turn one. This is your transfer battle. BMW versus Porsche. Roberto versus Andre, the driver that beats the other in this contest, will move on to that final race of the day. Should be about three laps to go next time by the stripe. James Pesek leads by 11.7. But this might be the hottest battle on the road at the moment. If this BMW gives up the spot. And he's going to slide over the rumbles. They're both wide again. And that's going to be another cut course penalty. And as soon as he serves that, that's going to trade the spots. Unless the five also got a penalty. 
or excuse me, the 11. If they both get a penalty, they're on equal footing and they'll continue the battle. But otherwise, I don't see how Roberto doesn't give up spots right here. Just under five minutes left on the clock, and this is the battle. That pink Porsche needs this spot, needs it. He wants to advance to the last race of the day. All the while, James Pesek is in traffic, and he's just got to be concerned about getting caught up in someone else's incidents because he's only got three rotations around Sebring before he can call himself a winner and advance to that final race. Drops a tire in the dirt at the exit of turn one, and just ahead of him is the six, Sevilla. And this is a high-intensity situation for a driver that hasn't really had to do a lot of passing tonight because he started on pole. If he can squeeze by on the right, no, he's going to back off. He's got time to burn, so he might as well use it. And this is very, very smart racecraft by James Pesek to... Let the car uh, ahead of him drive off the road, and that will allow Pesic to pull through. And yes, he will lap the number six and light the afterburners on his mission to win here at Sebring. Other battles have completely fizzled, so there's just two and a half laps left to go and no positions under fire. More lap traffic. This time it is the number seven of Allen, and I think this one should be a fairly easy get around for James Pasek, but he's only got two laps left, and his lead has come down a couple of seconds as he was being careful about the number six of Ilya. Through turn 17, nice over-under maneuver there from Pasek, and he's through the traffic, and we'll see two laps left. That was very close to being uh, the white flag here. I didn't see the white flag from the, the stands, and we will not get it, but that was pretty close. There's Jose running in third. It's been a quiet day for him, kind of a no-man's land back here. 9.8 up to the car ahead, 14.2 to the car behind. Right on board with James Pesek. And a battle has reignited for fifth place, and this is the all-important one, the transfer spot into the next race. Six-tenths of a second is all that stands between Andre and a shot to win the race overall at the end of the day. Big push from the Porsche. It's going to be too wide, and it's not going to work into the tires. And they will get two laps to go. They could end up a lap down before it's all said and done, though. That would shorten their race. 
Simpson trying to work around lap traffic. He is being held up. But James Pesek, he can stop if he it just hits the brakes here. This race is going to get to checkered. But it is not. If he had slowed two seconds, that would have been it. That would have been the checkers. But it's now the final lap here. Lap 13. James Pesek works his way through turn one. Free and truly clear of any dramas behind him. And the nine has gone around for a slide and gives up the spot in the transfer. And here's what happened. It was all well and good. And then just gets down here into turn one and going to push off the track all on his own. And in the tank slapper, that results. That's going to eliminate him from contention. Roberto is out, but now this is the transfer fight. Can Max chase down Andre? The green Porsche is going to go through. They're both off track at Cunningham Corner. Who wants the last transfer spot? Nobody. Here comes the five on the outside. He is through and takes the spot away. And Max might steal this one. What a race all the while. James Pesek is working his way around towards Tower Turn. Lap traffic to contend with. He has a 13 second advantage. So no real need to push the issue here. He is taking his time. He does not want to get turned around. Whatever you do, keep that car facing straight. And while he's doing this battle, behind him for fifth place, transfer spot still underway. They still have an entire lap to go. Here's James Pesek into the last corner. 12, and let's see the nine go for a loop behind him. Checkered flag, James Pesek dominates this race at Sebring and will qualify himself into the final race of the day. Then it's going to be Daniel. Daniel Simpson qualifies his way in in the number four. And then the eight of Jose is also in. Eric is also in. But for the last spot, it's 1.5 seconds, and this is the last position that qualifies in. And the 11's off track in the background. If Max can steal this, he can't overdrive it, can't throw it away. It's only 2.6 seconds. So if he makes a mistake, it could be over. But a well-executed last sector should be more than enough. And last time down the straightaway here for Max in the number five, the 11 is going to come up just short unless the five botches this last turn. On a track that is so bumpy around the circuit, the circuit, you don't need to bump and bang with your competitors. The five of Max is going to manage to sneak through and be the last qualifier in to the final race of the day. Checkered flag, Max and Andre, fifth and sixth. And that is it for the qualifying races. The full race is going to be up in just a couple minutes' time. And we'll step away for a few minutes before returning for the last race of the day here at Sim Racing Chicago.
today is a track day with PSI Motorsports at Ozarks International Raceway. I'm very excited and very happy that we have a big crowd of cars. This facility is amazing. I love it. I'm encouraged to come everyone and see it and try it. And uh, we're going to have another very cool event in October. It's going to be open uh, track day. We're going to have a few cars for rent. Supra and a Volkswagen GTI. Also uh, ride-alongs in race cars. So our program is uh, designed for you to come and experience Ozark International Raceway. You can choose either BMW E92 or you can choose a Porsche Cayman Club Sport. So those two cars we offer a ride along set. We're gonna have a good time, so check it out.
Today is a track day with PSI Motorsports at Ozarks International Raceway. I'm very excited and very happy that we have a big crowd of cars. This facility is amazing. I love it. I'm encouraged to come everyone and see it and try it. And uh, we're going to have another very cool event in October. It's going to be open uh, track day. We're going to have a few cars for rent. Supra and a Volkswagen GTI. Also uh, ride-alongs in race cars. So our program is uh, designed for you to come and experience Ozark International Raceway. You can choose either BMW E92 or you can choose a Porsche Cayman Club Sport. So those two cars we offer a ride-alongs in. We're gonna have a good time, so check it out.
Well, the final race of the day is finally here for the PSI Motorsports USA event here at Sim Racing Chicago. Again, I'm Kyle Heyer, and this is the last event of the day. It's only a 10-minute race, so it is a frantic five-lap battle amongst the best of the best here this afternoon. Your starting lineup is on the left-hand side of the screen. It's Jose, Matt, Allen, Luba, Stanislav, John, Eric, Jim, Daniel, and Andre, the rest of your top ten. That's your starting lineup for this 10-minute race. It's winner take all here now. And it's a whole bunch of Porsches and a couple of BMWs lined up. I think it's only one BMW against a whole fleet of Porsche machines. Again, big thanks again to those that have helped this event happen. Of course, Sim Racing Chicago, Auto Transport Chicago, SVB Express, Motul, and PSI Motorsports USA. Appreciate everyone's support. This is the last race for the day. Thanks for sticking with us this afternoon on YouTube and on Facebook. And it's time to go racing one final time. Out of the last corner, we will get the green flag. And keep an eye at the tail of the field that is that number two of Daniel. He is going to be a rocket ship. Green flag and already a frantic start. And are they going to be colliding before turn one? Three abreast, four abreast towards the first corner. Everybody searching for room. There's a crash, and it's the, uh, the sevens in it. The two, I think, is in it. And it's pandemonium at the exit of turn one. And full, free and clear goes Luba in the one. He pulls ahead, and the rest of the field is left to pick up the pieces. Drama in the opening corner. Now the seven gets a punt, or gives a punt, rather, to the two. Daniel goes around for a spin, and he will have work to do in the next... Nine minutes and 20 seconds of this race. So as frantic as it started, it all comes to a head in the opening corner as it typically does here at Sebring. And now how about a look at this down into the hairpin for the first time. There's the number seven driven by Matt Dergem in the number 10. And then Eric Bilipchik in the number three. And cars scrambling for purchase on the pavement. Here's Stanislav in the number Five. That's the green Porsche in the one. It's Jose. Breaking battle into Cunningham on the opening lap. And Luba's clear by 2.7 seconds already. It's time to run, run, run and get out of Dodge. Avoid any more calamity or carnage that might come your way. This is the battle for third as Jose tries to pull away. Jose Esquina in the number one. Then it's Stanislav Dreva. Matt Cotter in the number seven just behind. On the run down to turn 17. Cotter takes a pretty aggressive entry to the corner. But the battle behind him between the three and the two is on. Car upside down, and it's Dreva upside down in the final corner. He has gone belly up at turn 17. This gets in too hot, and I think there's going to be contact with the wall, and up and over he went, skidding on the roof as the two of Daniel Sims, uh, Simpson went right around him. And now the lead battle is on Luba, has the eight of Shahan right behind him. Battle for the lead. Looking left, looking right. The try it now the inside here into turn seven for the top spot in the final race of the day. And from a long ways back, here comes the one of Jose Esquina. But Shahan takes the lead away. Shahan Ahmed in the number eight green Porsche. And then for second, as quickly as he was leading, he finds himself now third. The four car of Luba. Off into the braking zone there. Luba Durjan in the... Number four was leading the opening lap of this race, led the opening lap of this race, but has now fallen to third as the dramas kick off behind him. Now it's Daniel Simpson versus Eric Pilipchuk. That is for fifth. These two Porsches, the number 
two and the number nine. Big lateral slide here. And trouble ahead. Car spinning, and there goes the seven of Matt. Off and away. Three laps complete, three laps to go. Seven tenths of a second is the only advantage that Shahan has over Jose Esquina. And then for fourth, the battle is pretty fierce between these two. The two and the nine continue to run nose to tail. One second now, Shahan Ahmed's got the advantage. Started this race in sixth and has somehow clawed his way to the front. Jose Esquina trails behind. And then that battle for third we documented between Luba and how about here comes the two of Daniel Simpson with a big head of steam. He's going to go to the left. He's going to get crowded into the gravel. Side by side for the podium spot. He is through. Simpson is. Can he keep the spot cleared into turn 10? Cunningham. Yes, he does. Now it's Luba versus Eric Pilipchuk for fourth place. Big send up the inside of tower turn. That's going to be a long, hard pass to make. There's contact there, and the four gets shuffled out into the gravel at the exit of turn 13. And behind him, the 10 goes for a little cattywampus slide, and he'll gather it up and carry on. So six minutes down, four minutes to go. Two laps remain for Shahan Ahmed in the leading number eight. It's 1.7 seconds back to Jose Esquina right here in the blue and red Porsche. Into Sunset Bend, top-down view of the most challenging corner on this racetrack. Maybe short of turn one. Esquina chasing Dahan Ahmed. Two laps to go from Sebring. Pushing their GT3 machines to the absolute limit. There's some lap traffic ahead for Ahmed. And Jose Esquina is going to have an opportunity to capitalize. Big understeer through turn three. The nose of the car not gripping the pavement like it needs to to catch this race leader. Two seconds, the advantage now for Ahmed over the lead. And a lunge down the inside at turn seven, but he cannot clear the traffic. Not this time, anyway. 1.6 seconds. That lead is dwindling. The second green car in the shot is your leader, and this is second place. The lead green car in that shot is a lap down car. It is Tanislav. He is down a lap, but fighting hard. One second, the lead is dwindling. Jose Esquina has an opportunity to take the lead away as the leader's trapped behind traffic. Desperation mode now for Shahan Ahmed. Two minutes and 10 seconds remain. Big send, and where did the lap car go? He's gone out of the shot because he got shuffled off track by Shahan. Four tenths of a second, but the damage is already done. Jose Esquina is half a second back from race winning here. One minute, 42 seconds remain. One more time around Sebring Raceway. 3.7 miles is all that Shahan Ahmed has to hang on for. But Jose Esquina is right there. There's the white flag, last lap. From sixth to first, and Esquina first to second.
It is a battle of precision from here to the end. Who's going to nail the next 17 corners? They're down to just 14 now, 13, 12 corners remain. And do you go into protection mode? Do you defend? Do you put your car offline to keep the trailing car behind you? A little bit off the apex there at turn seven. That's a great corner for Jose Esquina. But he did not get out of the corner very well. Didn't get to the power as soon as the race leader did. Sean Ahmed, half a lap away from victory at Sebring. Seven tenths. His lead is growing, a slip and a slide for Jose Esquina. It is looking less and less likely that he'll have a shot to win. Through tower turn. And a battle for sixth. The four of Luba, the seven of Matt Cater. Luba's wide and through comes the seven, takes sixth place away. Two corners left for Shahan Ahmed, carving his way through five of his competitors to drive up to the lead and withstand a fierce offensive by Jose Esquina. Last time down the back straightaway and heading into the Sunset Bend for the final time. Sunset here in Chicago, in Sim Racing Chicago. And it is Sunset on the PSI Motorsports iRacing season. Shahan Ahmed wins at Sim Racing Chicago, and he takes it at Sebring by one second over Jose Esquina. Third place, Daniel Simpson, job well done from ninth to podium. I'm sure he'll take that, followed by Eric Pilipchik in fourth, and Jem Ahmed in the number 10 rounds out your top five. Then it's Matt Luba, Andre Allen, and Stanislav, the rest of your running order. But what a battle, what a race, and what a weekend for the PSI Motorsports Sim Racing Chicago event. If you've never seen Sim Racing Chicago in person, it is worth checking out as uh, we finish out the weekend here. Make sure that you check out PSIMotorsportsUSA.com as well as the partners and people that made this happen. SVB Express, reliable flatbed trucking. Come and join our team as a driver or Auto Transport Chicago. Over 300 pickup truck uh, all over the road in the USA. Fast and reliable door-to-door -door car delivery and full body shop services. Big thanks to Motul and, of course, Sim Racing Chicago. I'm Kyle Heyer. We'll see you next time here from Algonquin, Illinois and Sim Racing Chicago.